Work is heating up, but I'll call you. She pulled her hand free and stepped away to shut the door. Ronald was intelligent and mature, and he'd bored her into glancing at her watch before the appetizers had been served. What was wrong with her? His jaw tightened and he sped off, leaving her alone in the parking lot. Most women probably didn't turn him down. Nari sighed, her gaze going to the darkened doorway of the old office building. Shadows danced across its face and over to the adjacent, desolate park. Thunder rolled in the distance, promising another late fall storm. Her bed called to her. It'd only take twenty minutes to drive home. And if she couldn't sleep, it was time she rearranged her kitchen anyway. She needed things to be color-coded. The wind rustled the barren trees and leaves crackled. She shivered. Yet she steeled her shoulders and strode across the wet, cracked concrete to the front door, which she unlocked with a scratched key. At some point she needed to learn not to beat her head against brick walls, but apparently this wasn't the night for that. Her boots clip-clopped across the dusty wooden floor of the deserted hallway to the rickety elevator. She said a quick prayer and stepped inside, hoping this wasn't the night it decided to just break free and crash to the basement. It hitched and jerked, but finally the door opened to a quiet, dark office. She fumbled for the switch and flipped on the yellow fluorescent lights in the vestibule, illuminating the bullpen with its empty desks. Mail muttering across the bullpen in case room one pulled her like a magnet. This was a mistake, but it was time somebody made it. Apparently she was the only one on the deep ops team willing to cross Angus Force right now. Enough was enough. The smell of whiskey caught her attention as she drew abreast of the doorway. Wonderful. He was drunk again. She stepped inside to find Angus sitting with his boots on the conference table, staring at a whiteboard of mutilation and death. Papers were scattered across the table in no apparent order, as if he'd flung them across to see where they'd land. A half-empty bottle of Jack Daniels rested on several manila file folders. No cup in sight. Roscoe snored quietly over in the corner on a new blue bed she'd bought for him the week before. Angus, you have to stop this, she whispered. He didn't flinch, no doubt having heard the elevator arrive. Go home, Nari. She wanted to go home, but she had a duty to the team, and it was time she finally did it. I had the power to take you out of this position for the last year, she murmured, leaning against the door jamb. I haven't exercised it because I think the team works. But you're killing yourself, and I can't let that happen. His chair swung around and his boots hit the floor as he turned to face her. The force of his gaze almost had her stepping back. His eyes were a clear green, deep and tortured.